these four little walls have a life all to themselves. Mm -hmm. They really do. They took quite a story. Carlota Flores is describing this historic home in downtown that Tucsonas know as El Charo Cafe. This 96-year tradition is thriving, making it the nation's oldest Mexican restaurant operated by the same family. Carlota's aunt started the business in 1922. Tia Monica also began a legacy of strong female ownership. She had this cooking skill and borrowed some money from her sister and opened her first El Charo on 4th Avenue. And then from there grew to the Temple of Music and Art and then to her building on Broadway. Carlota describes her Tia Monica as a real pistol who would take a jab at the IRS when paying her taxes by check. She would write to Los Ladrones, which means to the thieves. They would write, they would endorse it, Los Ladrones, and cash it and get their, their money. Monica Flynn was also an amazing cook, but urban renewal came in the 1960s, and Tia Monica was forced to relocate to her family home on Court Avenue. In the early 1970s, Carlota and her husband Raymond moved back to Tucson from California to take over the restaurant. We'd already done what people do. They go away for a while, right. time to come back home. So we came back home and we've been here ever since. At 72, Carlota still has the same passion and drive that she did when she took over El Charo in the 70s. The only thing is that today I get a little bit more tired. <laughs> she has grown El Charo into an empire with multiple locations throughout Tucson, but the historic downtown location remains the centerpiece. It's more than just a restaurant, though. I mean, oh, El definitely. Charo is El Charo part, is of, part of Tucson. Yeah. yeah, it's a fabric of Tucson. It really is. It has a thread in it. Uh, but is it El Charo or is it the family? Or is it El Charo, the restaurant, and families that come here, including our own? We live and take care of it. But it could mean something to your family. Carlota proudly shows off not just her food, but her Tia Monica's one-time home, including a 100-year-old rug prominently displayed, along with Carlota's collection of sombreros. And yes, El Charo still dries the carne seca on the roof before it eventually winds up in your chimichanga. Carlota still proudly tells the story of being present when Tia Monica famously and accidentally created the chimichanga. We were in the kitchen and she was making a snack for all the kids and the fryers had, were still hot and one of the little girls pulled her night gown and she accidentally, the, the burro fell into the vat of oil and she went to say a cuss word and then realized she had all these children and quickly changed it the way growing ups do and she went and said her chimichanga and called it that. By the time she found a pair of tongs to take it out, it was crispy and fried. And tell me, who doesn't like fried foods? So this chimichanga looks delicious. Huh? Is it a form of flattery to you that others have tried to say that they invented this first or? or? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it no matter what. I love the fact that it creates conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I will let you know that I've eaten an entire one before of yours, but uh, it comes at a cost. It's it, a full stomach. It is a full yeah. stomach. And you know, you but they're so good. You take a little bit home. And yeah. that's what people so do. So delicious.